Hey everyone, this is the LEGO Creator 3-in-1 Main Street set, and specifically this is the main build, the primary build, the one that uses all of the 1,459 pieces. Now I did build this live on Twitch, but I will take it apart and build it again, and then take it apart and build it again to show you separate videos covering each of the three main builds. Well, the three official builds for this set. And uh, I did pay $140 US for the set, and that is its standard retail price. If you're interested in purchasing something LEGO related, please consider using one of the affiliate links in the video description, but that is not a specific endorsement of the set that you're looking at right now. Let me give you my full thoughts about it. Now, first of all, what you're seeing here might not match your own own vision of what this set looks like based on official pictures. And that's because I have taken this section here and put it on this side. And normally they have you setting it up over here. It's just a, it's just a, a modular system. So you can take any of these individual small miniature buildings and take them apart. They're just connected there and there with uh, Technic pins, you know, usual, usual stuff for that. But this, this gives you a longer street that uh, you know will fit onto a, a shelf or something that's not particularly deep, but it still gives you a corner unit. So this is a three-story hotel over here. And then there are two buildings that are related to music. Last one down here is a cafe. I like the colors of the cafe. I like the sign, especially with the coffee mug there that has realistic proportions, realistic to the minifig sized coffee mug. And you do get one of those on the inside as well. This is a print, but we've gotten that before. Really like the teal here and the use of some transparent one by two bricks in the trans brown there. Also sideways window building here. You know, it just gives you a little bit of a different look than maybe you're used to if you're just, you know, thinking about common shapes and sizes of Lego pieces and specifically windows. You get a couple of chairs out front with a single table there with a stud on top of it because it's a jumper. So you can actually place a food or drink item on it. The door opens, of course, for access. A little alleyway over here with an arch and a small tree that's brick built, comes up from the ground in the back. But I like the little bit of uh, light aqua here. There's also a ladder to suggest some access to the upper floor for this one and a nice vine that's flowering here. Also a suggestion here of some solar panels. Here's what the inside looks like. Got a nice double press over there with a slightly different build than they've used before. And over on this side, just a little bit more foliage that's growing in the archway. Meanwhile, upstairs, it's like a, I don't know, is it, is it an office? I think it's just an office or is it actually intended to represent a, a bit of a studio apartment but you're only seeing a little bit of it because this is very narrow up here there's very little depth up top and the shape of things is actually interesting uh, throughout this whole thing because you've got just an eight stud uh, deep main floor ground floor here which includes a four to five stud uh, depth for the for the, the actual buildings themselves and then just a maximum of three a maximum of four but mostly three all the way down to two studs as you get up to here space for the the walkway so it's just you know a little bit a little bit different the way that they've proportioned things and then it's four studs up here for this second level and that varies slightly as we move down the line but yeah you know small space had to be really limited but i think it has a good amount of detail for the size of space that that is available there the next space over meanwhile is a music shop so this has some bins with some suggestions of vinyl but they're just previous printed pieces that we've had a number of times, not specifically record related, you know, a little record player here also for testing. And upstairs is a spot for some live music to be played. So I'm assuming that they would have bands come in to provide entertainment, uh, you know, just to the public, free entertainment to the public to draw business towards the uh, the storefront here. And the front of this is really nice. It's brightly colored. You got the nice kind of jukebox aesthetic going on here, I think is what they're kind of going for. Uh, folks have complained about the uh, the needle being on the wrong side for the suggestion of the record player there. Not the first time that Lego has done that, but you know, you can swap that if it if it bugs you too much and i like the shaping here you know it has some some different depth to it some partial stud offsets that you know just feel good and and fresh this next spot over is also music related they've got a sign out front with sheet music that's a print there are no stickers used in this set so anything that looks decorated is a print including the extra keyboard prints here. All of this is taking a lot of inspiration from the Parisian restaurant, maybe just a little bit from a detective's office or corner garage, just with the, the coloration here, but you know, definitely Parisian restaurant style 
top. And inside of this one, this is where you get musical equipment rather than buying music that's already been recorded. A speaker, a guitar over here, and a keyboard. That's just it though. However, upstairs, uh, probably a related business, an offshoot business, it's a little recording studio. So you've got some uh, some sound deadening material up on the wall here, a place for the person to sit down in front of the microphone. And then the, the, uh, the audio engineer is over here working on a console that's really, really simple and, and basic, but you get the general idea here and you got the idea of, uh, you know, pretty much all the, all the major things that would be here with the different lights to tell if they're actually recording or not. And then the glass barrier in between. I really do feel like this this gets the idea across of what it's supposed to be, even though there's only a depth of three studs for this entire space. And then finally, all the way up top is an office. It just has a computer there with a fancy monitor. It doesn't have anything on the screen right now. Uh, just enough space for a person to sit there. And on the other side is just a map. The hotel gets the most prominence of anything here, and it probably uses more pieces than two of the other buildings, possibly all three of them put together. There's, there's a lot that goes into this. There's more depth to it. Obviously it goes around the corner. You've got all these little outside balconies around the upper floors have the sideways building for their small windows. Got the teal color, dark blue. This is not medium blue. It's the lighter version of, of medium blue, the bright light blue, light, bright light, bright light, or used, we used to call it um, uh, light royal blue I, I believe i don't know the, i don't remember the official term for it but it's that brighter color that's not aqua though uh, the diagonal building for the sides here which does not rely on any 45 degree pieces it's just uh, using lego math to fit into the space including a double thick entryway a little bit of a uh, uh, you know an entry plateau right there stacked up candle stick pieces in gold got this nice cap up on the top with again the gold pieces all the gold matches because they're using only the modern pearl gold looks like most of the old pearl gold has been flushed out of the system by now so we're seeing a lot better consistency from piece to piece i'm still seeing a little bit of hue difference in some of the parts that probably use a slightly different material but overall this is looking good you got a little bit of foliage outside you know there's a lot of good stuff going on with this as viewed from the front. Inside at the ground level on the right is the reception desk with, with an interesting build, interesting shape, and also very bright. It's mostly just hiding pieces to be used in other builds from this, this three-in-one, but it's it's interesting, you know, it's different. I just don't think the color quite works with the, the rest of it, but that, that's fine. This side is just a lounge, so they've got a small comfy chair for a single person to be able to sit there while they're waiting for something, and a small side table lamp up a, uh, above that. And then this floor takes you into one of the actual suites. It's pretty sizable and is definitely set up for somebody to be doing some some work on the road. You got a full desk set up there with some studs so you can you can put some things on it a corner table with the plant on it and then this is just the bed over here which can hold a single person and then the topmost floor has a bathtub big old bathtub build that a figure can lay in it's full of water right now the color is dark azure for that but you know that takes up a bunch of the space so you can still put a figure on top of it the other side meanwhile just has the bed and that's it uh, and you know access to the balcony there as well which is I guess a perk of the penthouse suite and finally up top just have a little bit of suggestion of an air conditioning unit and that's it in case you were wondering this is what the modules look like individually so you can of course rearrange these however you want again they just attach with the standard Technic pins down close to the ground but I think the default way that they arrange them is is pretty much the best the, the one that makes the most sense unless you want to go around a corner interestingly these are not compatible for the most part with the current standard in city and friends and harry potter etc that's using the 8 by 16 bases well i mean these are these are eight deep but what is this 12 12 studs what's up with that and then going up to this next level well, that's only four studs deep here once again, four studs deep. So I could I could swap these things around. That's cool. They set up their own little module system for this. If I wanna put this instead, this one pops up. Wait, I thought this one popped up as well, doesn't it? 
Yes, it does. Okay. This one has a, an extra little extension to it. It's actually five studs. That's why I was stuck a little bit more. I had a little bit more grip, but oh, yep. Has to be offset back just a, just a bit. So you can do stuff like that, it, but it introduces kind of its, I actually like that color scheme over there. That works. Whoa. Uh, totally accidental here. Oh, each of these works. This one, this one, the worst, but <laughs> interesting. I like it, but not compatible with other stuff that they're doing right now. Other good stuff. So they've they've created a, a system that's working well, and then now they've created another system just for this one set. For your choice of any one of the minifigures, a second generation version of the wheelchair is included here in the yellow color. Here are a few of the figures. I like all of these prints, except for the leg print for the barista over here, which has never been good since they first introduced that. It's never had good opacity for the brown down here. Also, sometimes you get that little little gap where the, the stamp just isn't quite able to go all the way around, but I'm really happy with the, the barista torso itself. This is pretty good. I like the leg print here as well. I like that face. I like that face. I mean, just, you know, usable stuff for people. I like that back print too. It's actually pretty, uh, pretty strong, just usable stuff for people in general, you know? And then here are the other three. Again, really nice prints, fancy stuff. Uh, notice the significant amount of metallic printing on that one there in the middle. Nice colors all around, you know, nice variability, variation. A little bit of metallic print even back here for the, for the little, uh, not buttons, but I guess rivets, it probably are. Oh, they might be buttons. Only one of them has the alternate face though, unfortunately. And that brings me to the leftover parts. Again, no sticker sheet for this set, of course, so this is it. Pricing for this 1,459 piece set was $140 US. It's 140 euros, 125 pounds UK, $180 Canadian, which is approximately 134 US dollars. And that feels, eh, feels okay for the amount of stuff, depending upon how you look at it. Uh, I think from here, it, it, it feels really good actually. But as soon as you do this and keeping in mind that this is this, this is the version of this set that uses all the pieces that makes it look as big as it possibly can. There's, there's not a whole lot of depth here for each space that is here. There is great usefulness, great usability, great level of detail, or not, maybe not great, but very good level of detail at the very least. And each of the builds feels good to me. You know, this feels like, even though it's a large set, it feels like something that families with some younger kids could enjoy together, you know, because there are a lot of relatively small builds that will give you that satisfaction of, of completion without having to go through a, a long, long, long process to get just one small thing actually done. You know, the biggest thing obviously is the hotel over here, but you can split it up. Um, however, that said, it could be said there's a bit of a missed opportunity here with each build getting its own book. Now I understand it could get a little bit confusing if they did a separate book for each building, for example, but then you do the same thing again for the other builds because they do give you physical manuals and that's a lot of, of paper, but uh, um, for, for all three in the set, but still this isn't set up for physical building with the physical instructions by a family. It's not one of those multi-build ones and it should have been, it really should have been. Uh, if families want to work on this or, you know, siblings, friends want to work on this together, they definitely have to go for the digital download, which of course is, is freely available. But I did want to point that out. Uh, the bit, the worst thing about this for me is, is not the price. It's the fact that Lego has established this great, great system for city building, for town building, for minifig compatible layout building or diorama building, play space building, and they abandon it with this set here. <laughs> got a bunch of sets on the market right now that use the 8x8 and 8x16 modules that fit together. And technically you can butt those up to this, but you can't swap uh, modules. At least not with this build. We'll see what's coming up with the others. So I really feel like some things could have been done better overall if this had been the same number of pieces had been used to build a little bit less you know, just larger, say, take out one of the modules, expand the others. 
and then made it compatible, put in more detail into each. This just goes for maximum length, although the corner, you know, is, is built up. And of course, you do have to recognize the fact that it is completely open around the back. It looks really impressive until you turn it around. It, it's not just a facade, but it's it's the minimum amount more than a facade. It's got that classic style through most of these spaces of only two studs of space for minifigs to stand barely on the edge. That's a lot of people refer to the good old days of Lego. Well, uh, in the old days, oftentimes many of the really old sets for city and town stuff would have that little space but they would have even less details in there. Again, detail is good, but I'm just not completely sold on this right now. I'm willing to bet if the main build was done with 8x8 and 8x16 compatible modules, which would have given more depth, surely would have been built with more depth per module, uh, you would have had that interactability with the other sets, but you also would have had more space, more substantive interior spaces for the, the smaller number of, of of buildings and, and offices and, and such. And I think that would have made me feel a lot better about it. And it would have felt more substantive and also would have felt more valuable. But I will go ahead and take this whole thing apart and rebuild it into the next version. And this will be covered in its own video. And I'll take that whole thing apart, and rebuild it into its final, mostly vertical version here. So TBD, I'm not gonna give you my final thoughts on the whole thing until I've tried it all. But for now, it's okay. If you like what you see and you feel like the value is good, great. I personally think if you like what you see, you should probably ask for a little bit of a discount on it and bring it back to about 120. Then for the amount of stuff, I just can't complain. Even, even if I'm not super happy with the design at about 120, for this amount of stuff, I'm feeling much more comfortable personally. And I think that's, a, I think that's attainable. I think that that is a, a number that we can see uh, before too long, you know, maybe in less than, than a year, if you're willing to be patient. Speaking of patience, thank you for making it to the end of the video here. And I hope that you will check out my reviews also, or my looks at the other two versions and a final summary. Bye for now.